everybody, thank you so much for coming back to another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about Saw. So we all know the Saw franchise at this point. It's the franchise that you're either kind of a psychopath in love or you're too squeamish to watch. The franchise known for its gore and its kills and its traps and putting people in incredibly ridiculous situations that they have to claw themselves out of in order to save their lives in these really, really gruesome, gruesome films. And yeah, that's something I love about this first film is how small in scale it is and just how well done it is as a mystery thriller rather than it being about the gore and the kills. So this film is directed by James Wan who would go on to do The Conjuring as well as films like Aquaman. He's gone on to do a Fast and the Furious film. I can't remember which one to be honest. But uh, yeah, you know, he's a really, really talented director clearly. And what I love about this film is the history behind it and the fact that they essentially really had a low budget. And when you watch this film, you can tell a lot of this movie takes place in the same spots. They don't really show too much of anything that is too gory or things that were going to kind of uh, you know blow up their budget a little bit more than they needed it to and I really enjoy that because it allows the film to feel small and contained and kind of have like a very focused story and that's something I really really enjoy about this film the film opens up and we're introduced to two characters who are trapped inside of this nasty bathroom type of thing together and yeah they both have handcuffs around their ankles and they're on opposite sides of the room and there are clues hidden around the room and they can only move so far and they have to see what they can use and what they can do in order to get in and out of this situation together. There's a dead body in the very center of the room. And yeah, they have no idea how they've gotten there and now they just have to figure out a way to get out of there. And as time goes on, we start to learn things about the two characters. We start to learn that they may actually have some connections that some of them didn't even know that they had. And there's something going on outside of this room. But yeah, this is the beginning of the Jigsaw madness, this franchise. I'm really excited to go ahead and get into the Saw franchise. I just recently started re-watching them. I've watched the first four so far. And yeah, I really genuinely enjoy this film going back and rewatching it. It's definitely one of the tighter films in the franchise as far as the story and the way that it's told. It's very tense. There are a lot of really great moments of tension. The performances in this film are very solid and very believable. And there's never a moment for me where I'm really bored watching this movie. I find it to be incredibly engaging. I find it to be really, really exciting. And it does leave you on the edge of your seat. Especially since I hadn't seen the movie in quite some time. I knew how it ended. I knew how a lot of things were going to play out. But it was nice to kind of just feel the tension and be a part of the mystery once again. It's a film that I don't have a whole lot to say about other than the fact that you should watch it. I think a lot of people sometimes completely just skip out on the Saw franchise or at least this first film or even the first three films simply because of the fact that you know they get really gory, they hear that they're really nasty, and there is that in this franchise. And I would say that that doesn't really fully start until the second film or even further into the franchise. There is definitely blood and gore and nastiness in each and every one of these installments, but I find this first film to be quite contained. There are a lot of moments where the characters have to do things. Famously, there is a scene in this movie where one of the characters has to saw through his leg. And what I love about that moment is that it's really based and focused mainly on the tension around the characters, what's going on with them, the performances, the music, and just the, the facial expression while he's cutting through his leg. And that's kind of how this film goes. There are these moments where things look creepy, look nasty. There's a grimy feel to the aesthetic of this film, as well as just the, the, the things that the characters have to go through, the things that the characters have to do on an overall level. And what I love about that is that they don't focus on the gore. When the guy is cutting through his leg, you do not see him cutting through his leg. They don't show it, but it's that moment, his face, the tension, the music, the other guy's reaction, all of that is really what makes makes it so powerful and what makes it so eerie, makes it so creepy. And that's what I love about this film is that with a lower budget, they were able to create a really focused and contained story that has a lot of mystery and is a great thriller horror piece that does have its creepier, like gory elements, but it's not necessarily focused on the gore. Later on in the franchise, it would become a lot more about the gore. It was about the traps being bigger and better and crazier, where there was gonna be more blood and more guts and a little bit more convoluted and crazy story. Whereas in this one, you know, you have this character of Jigsaw, the serial killer who doesn't really get his hands dirty, who puts people in these situations where they now have to fight for their life and see how much they really want to live. And he usually captures different people that maybe are drug addicts or people who are murderers or people who screw other people over. And it's people that he essentially feels don't deserve to live or people who he feels uh, don't really appreciate their lives. And he kind of puts them in a situation now where it's like you got to fight for your life. And, you know, by the end 
of this, it's kind of like he's doing a favor for you is the way he looks at it. It's like fight for your life and by the end of this, you should be appreciating your life and anything that you complained about before or anything that you did to your body like drugs and stuff like that to waste your life, um, you know, you, this should essentially fix you. That's kind of the way Jigsaw sees it is like he's putting you through this test because he kind of feels like you don't appreciate life. And I love that about Jigsaw. He's not your typical I'm going to go around and kill you or just do this for the pleasure of it. I really enjoy the way he thinks. I enjoy how crazy and, and methodical he is as a villain in this franchise and I think that this first film does such a great job the performances again are really solid the tension the aesthetic the color palette of this film all of it really just comes together to make something very creepy something very eerie and at the end of the day it's a really great thriller horror film with a lot of mystery involved it doesn't focus on the gore though that is a part of the story and part of what's going on but it doesn't visually focus on you seeing those things it's just built up in those moments with the tension and the music and the performances that you know what's happening but you don't have to see it and I think that that's when a film is at its strongest when you can have things kind of implied to you and have them feel just as creepy or just as powerful without you having to actually see them and one thing I really love about this film is the cast you have Danny Glover in here playing the uh, detective that's on the outside that's trying to figure things out I love Danny Glover such a great classic actor and it's really great to see him in a film like this I think sometimes I forget that he's in this movie because of the where the rest of the franchise goes and some of the actors that would start to appear a bunch of nobodies that you really don't care about but this first film has a really solid cast like I said Danny Glover you also have Lee Winnell who actually wrote this film and I think was part of the writing team for the first three films he also uh, wrote some of the Insidious films and directed one of them and he just recently directed the latest Invisible Man movie so that's really cool he stars in this film as well and then you have Carrie Elwes who's just a fantastic actor so you have this really really strong cast in this film and that's got to be one of the best things about this film especially when it comes to the really tense moments so yeah guys that's gonna be my review of the first Saw film. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. I'm excited to review this whole franchise, especially as it gets crazier into the later part of the franchise where it just is less about story and more about blood. It, it should be fun to go back and rewatch those movies. So leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this movie. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Hit that like button if you guys enjoyed this video. And as usual, I'll see each and every single one of you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.